Independent Street Shemokin is a full-service certified public accounting firm. At Klasik & Associates, the goal is to serve their clients in the most professional, efficient, and cost-conscious manner possible. Klasik & Associates' overall team player approach ensures that their success is directly related to the success of their clients. Contact the Shemokin office simply by dialing 570-648-6386. Klasik and Associates takes great pride in being big enough to serve, but small enough to care. The Clebon Insurance Group, located at 426 West Valley Avenue, Elysburg, is proud to represent Erie Insurance for all your personal and commercial insurance needs. With a dedicated team of six licensed insurance professionals and an experienced and friendly customer support staff, over 75 years of combined insurance expertise Club on Insurance Group is here to offer the very best policies for the very best prices, all of which are backed by award-winning service. Club on Insurance Group can be reached at 570-648-5055 or visited on the web at www.clebboninsurance.com. And with that, the kickoff is underway as the Tigers return it. Joey Williams gets it at the four. He drops it initially, and he's going to get dropped inside the 20. So Southern Columbia will start on offense inside the... They're 20 at about the 12-yard line. The Bulldogs won the toss and deferred, giving the ball to Southern, and that was a good start by the Bulldogs special teams, Casey. Yeah, and here we go, D Dave. We get to see what this new-look Tiger offense has in store. Got to replace 1,900-plus yards from Braden Wislowski, over 1,400 from West Barnes. And it's got to be the first time in, I don't know, nearly a decade that a Division I skill position player is likely not going to be toting the rock for the Tigers. So Wise is under center. Going in motion is Loudon Murphy. And it's going to be a handoff to Garrett Garcia. He breaks one tackle. He's across the 30. Breaks another one across the 40. And he's out to the 43-yard line. Welcome back, Garrett Garcia. First carry of his high school career after an ACL tears, a 30-yard first down. First off, Dave, it's just great to see that young man back out here on the football field. A special talent, and he was sorely missed last year. He put in a lot of hard work throughout last season and over the offseason to get back out here. And he always said the whole time, I want to play fullback next year. I want to play fullback. Well, there he goes, getting his shot, breaking multiple tackles, picking up the first Tiger first down of the season. So it's first and 10 Tigers from the 43-yard line. Handoff's going to go to Murphy. He's going to try and get the outside. He's going to get across midfield, tripped up right about at the 49-yard line. On the stop there was Caleb May, but it's an eight-yard gain for Murphy. So the Tigers' biggest test, their offensive line coming in with the inexperience. They look good in these first two plays, Casey. Yeah, they Laid down a few nice blocks there for, for Murphy, and we know from, you know, he has some experience from last year, rotated as a starter, nearly 500 yards and 10 TDs. He, he really has good patience in the backfield, does a good job letting his blockers set up. I think you saw a little bit of that on display there as he picked up a nice first down gainer. So it's second down and two at the Berwick 49-yard line. Wise back to pass. He's going to be chased outside. He throws it away incomplete. Good pressure there by the Bulldogs, and nobody was open as Wise looked to the right side. Everybody was going across the middle. Incomplete brings up a third and two. I'd like to see the Tigers taking a shot there. I know Coach Roth has mentioned. Certainly would expect them to throw the ball a bit more this year, at least in theory, than they had in past years. I thought it was a good job by Wise there, Dave. He felt the pressure coming from his blind side. He steps up and out of the pocket and gets rid of the ball. Throws it away, avoids a turnover or a sack on the play. Third and two here, 10-24 left in the first quarter from the Bulldog 49. Handoff's going to go to Garcia. He's going to get a first down and more. He's inside the 40, inside the 30, inside the 20, inside the 10, and he's going to go nearly into the end zone. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the four-yard line, 45-yard pickup there, Casey. So two carries, the first two carries of Garrett Garcia's career after an ACL tear, 75 total yards. Excellent start for Garcia. Got to give credit where it's due, Dave. The left side of that line 
Weak side belly action there from Roth on third and two. They open up a massive hole in Garcia. Boy, for never playing running back before. Great vision on the play. Finds the hole, accelerates to the outside, and drags defenders inside the red zone. Showing a little bit of his inner Henry Hynoski here. Tiger legend, first year principal. And we're inside the red zone. And we have a penalty flag. And as we find out what that is, this red zone potential scoring drive is driven by Blaze Alexander, Chrysler Dodge, Jeep Ram, Fiat of Lewisburg, helping you score big on savings. So the penalty is going to be a five-yard variety. It'll bring up a first and goal from the nine. I didn't see who jumped there, Casey. I would assume it was probably an interior lineman. I didn't see it either, Dave. So, first and goal from the nine. Handoff goes to Murphy, and he's going to get inside the five to the four. So give him five yards. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, bringing up second down and goal. So we've seen so far five play drive. Two handoffs to Garcia, two to Murphy. We haven't seen Madden touch the ball yet. He has missed pretty much the entire Preseason and summer due to a broken bone in his foot. 9.39 left in the first quarter. Handoff goes to Garrett Garcia. He's going to get inside the one to about the half yard line. So to bring up third and goal from the one. Be interesting to see here, Dave, on third down. I know last year, especially in the playoffs, Coach Roth really went to a balanced set making the defense square up as a lot of teams were shading with Slosky's side. I'm not sure you're going to see teams shade here, but he does go to that balance set to sort of even out the defense. Nice tackle there by Harrison Snyder. And this time the handoff's up the gut, and it's a touchdown. Scoring the touchdown for the Tigers is Garrett Garcia. And add another Tiger with the last name Garcia that reaches the end zone. Well, the two that came before him sure else sure were something special. Dave and older brothers, Gage and Gavin Garrett, moving over to the offensive side of the ball. And you knew that's what he was going to be good for. Third and shirt at the goal line. Tigers just run a simple wedge play. Garcia sticks his nose in there, powers through with all that 225-pound frame. The extra point by Tigers kicker Isaac Carter is up through and good. We got a score of seven nothing, folks. Nine minutes to go here in the first. We'll be right back on Bill ninety five point three in the Black Diamond Sports Network, where you can always get your game on. Canoble Lumber, True Value, Route forty seven, Elysburg. One trip is all it will take for you to find everything you need for your home projects or contracting needs. Convenience store hours are available Monday through Saturday for the finest in tools and materials, or advice from experienced professionals. The choice is Knoebel Lumber. Stop in or call 570-672-2531 or toll free at 1-800-332-6755. Knoebel Lumber, True Value, Route 487, Elysburg. Quality material, adding value to your home. So we welcome back our radio listeners. Three minutes exactly on that drive, the first touchdown of the 2023 season, a one-yard fullback dive by Garrett Garcia as the Tigers lead the Bulldogs 7 to nothing. Pretty impressive drive there, Casey. Yeah, Seven Dave, play drive. Dave, and I got to say, I got to come away from that drive impressed with the offensive line. You look, and it's tough to see in live time, but it certainly appeared a lot of guys getting on their assignments, getting some push downfield, allowing these talented backs, Garcia and Murphy, to find some running room. And hats off to Garrett back in action for the first time in over a year, punching off the opening possession with the touchdown. And what did you expect, Casey? Isaac Carter, as he did so many times last year, nearly 50 times he broke a school record, and it has to be up there near the state's record. 49 touchbacks, I believe you had him at, and there's number one. We're going to have to keep a tally on those as the season goes along, Dave. If you recall, last year we had to do a retroactive Research on that one. Let's try to keep an update on that. 
And boy, Dave, I'm sure excited to see that man, Isaac Carter, on the defensive side of the ball. First full year playing, of course, he came after the soccer season was over last year and infused energy into this defensive line. He's put it on weight, he's put on muscle, and he's a full-time starter at defensive tackle. This Tiger defensive unit has a chance to be special. Let's see how they open things off here this season. And the new quarterback starter, Ethan Lear, is in the shotgun. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be stood up after a gain of three yards by a host of Tigers. It'll bring up a second down and seven. It's a tale of two tapes, per se, here. You know, offense for Berwick replacing a lot of key starters from the previous season, while the Tigers, just about everybody on this unit either started or saw significant time last year. And it's going to be Lear handing it off to Winter. And who is there? Isaac Carter to make the stop. A nice run there, though, by the senior Tyler Winter. He gets about four, bringing up a manageable third and three. Yeah, the whole playbook's open here for the Berwick Bulldogs. We got third and manageable after that impressive Tiger drive. You really don't want to go three and out. Bulldogs tried to spread the Tigers out. Looks like they're going to do that again here, Dave. A little spread action. So Lear has Winter with him in shotgun. Lear's back to pass. He rolls out. He's going to throw it, but he's going to be hit as Isaac Carter gets the hurry. And it's going to be a three and out for the Bulldogs. You mentioned it coming in, Casey, and Isaac Carter left off last season right where he started this season. And it's going to be a three and out. Nice pressure run there. Just a quick update for those wondering. The uh, Southern Columbia YouTube page seems to not be working right now. The school district is trying to work on a fix. They think it's a camera issue, so we're glad you're tuning in. So punting is Luke Peters. He gets off a punt, not a long one. It's going to get into Tiger territory, but it'll be excellent field position for Southern Columbia. Great start by the defense, Casey, and we knew coming in that this defense is one of the best potentially of all time. Yeah, David, we talked about it in our pregame media meeting. I brought it up to you. Isaac Carter, I think, has a chance to be one of the most special defensive linemen to ever come through this school this season. Not mentioned on any first-team preseason awards. I know you said formalities. He's on there as a kicker. Preseason awards, what does it matter? I think it might go down as one of the silliest omissions in local sports media history. Isaac Carter... Good luck trying to block that young man this year in the backfield making plays early and often here for the Tigers. So the officials are talking something over, it appears. Quick score update. One of our other Black Diamond broadcasts. It's Mifflinburg leading Midwest 7 to nothing, And we have a Good one also as Mount Carmel area is taking on North Schuylkill at the Silver Bowl in Mount Carmel. Schmokin area hosting Lewisburg at Kemp Memorial and Danville is hosting Bloomsburg. So again, we're trying to get this huddle camera fixed, situation fixed. I know they're working on it currently. I'm getting a lot of texts. I don't have any control over that. So first and 10, Wise back to pass. He looks, he's gonna throw it to Kyle Chrisman on the out pattern. Just, it hit his fingertips, but it would have been a heck of a catch, and I don't even think if he would have caught it, it would have been a completion. I think he was going to be out of bounds. Yeah, just a touch off there. I think Wise maybe felt a little more pressure coming from his blind side. Nice route by Chrisman. He broke off a real deep comeback route, back shoulder type of throw to the boundary. Keep an eye on Chrisman, Dave. He's one of the fastest kids in the state, he started to break out near the end of last season with a couple big touchdowns in the postseason. Tigers are going to rely heavily on him and the other senior, Jay Coy, at the wide receiver position this year. So Wise is going to pitch it to Carter Madden, his first carry. He's going to get across midfield to about the 49-yard line. It'll be a five-yard pickup. Good to see Carter Madden healthy enough to play, and it'll bring up a third and five at the Bulldog 49-yard line, the Tigers lead 7 to nothing with 7.20 remaining in this first quarter. And a nice job by the Berwick defensive unit there. Carter broke the first tackle with a nice stiff arm, but 
The rest of the Berwick defense did a good job filling over there, limiting a big gain for the Tigers. Handoff's going to go to Loudon Murphy. He's going to get a first down. He's inside the 40, rushes to about the 36-yard line before he's brought down on the play by Tymir Wilkerson. So give Murphy 13 yards on that gain and another first down for the Tigers. Nice job again there by this inexperienced Tigers offensive line. Only one returning starter, full-time starter, two guys that got some time last year. They're doing a nice job here early on. First and 10 Tigers from the 36. Wise back to pass. He looks. It's going to be incomplete. It was a slant pattern that Hoy had a chance at. I don't know if it went through his hands or if it got broken up, but he threw it in a good spot as the D-back was coming in. It's going to be incomplete. Yeah, I think we'll see the Tigers go back to that slant pattern quite a bit. Just a tick off on the timing between quarterback and receiver. It's something they work on, I'm sure. We'll see him go back to that here early on. Second and 10. Tigers in their wing T formation. Handoff up the middle to Garrett Garcia. Breaks one tackle. He's inside the 30 to about the 24-yard line where he's going to pick up enough for another Tiger first down. Bryce Holden on the stop. Give Garcia 12 on that carry. And Casey, he's at 91 yards now on five carries in this first quarter. Well, Dave, obviously we know he's one of the best inside linebackers to ever play for the Southern Columbia Tigers. And there's a lot of great ones, don't get me wrong. He's in that list. We weren't 100% positive what he looked like running the ball. Well, Dave, I think he broke that first tackle there. It didn't even slow him down. He looks good running the football here early on. With that brace on his right leg, handoff goes to Carter Madden. Nice juke move as he's inside the 20, gets down to about the 16-yard line. Healthy pickup there by Madden on his second carry. Klinger on the stop, eight yards for Madden. It's now going to be a red zone opportunity for the Tigers, and this red zone potential scoring drive is driven by Blaze Alexander Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Fiat of Lewisburg, helping you score big on savings. Ball spotted at the 16-yard line, 5.28 left in the first quarter. Handoff goes to Garcia. It's going to be a first down. He breaks one tackle. He's inside the five, and he's going to score a touchdown. 16 yards, a battering ram. Not only did he score, he went over the 100-yard mark, Casey, in the first half of the first quarter. Defenders not even slowing him down out there. Davies running through arm tackles like a veteran fullback. Let's, again, give a shout-out right side of the line. Brayton Longer at center, first-year starter. Robert Long at right guard. Rotated at the center spot last year, now full-time at right guard. And John Quinton, the first-year sophomore starter at right tackle. They are paving a way out there for these Tigers. And then that play specifically the right side for Garrett Garcia's touchdown. Kick on the way by Carter was good. It's 14-0, 5-17 to go here in the first. We'll take a quick 30-second break on Bill 95.3 and be right back here on the Black Diamond Sports Network. Shine a light on your business with Lauer Media Company, just as they are proud to shine a light on tonight's game. Locally owned and operated, yet globally minded, Lauer Media Company offers custom solutions to grow your business through digital marketing and their business-to-business -business sales system. Visit Lauer Media Company at lauermediaco.com, and together they will make your future bright. We're back here, Casey. I'm sure it has happened with the historic numbers they put up, but I'd be interested to go back into history books and see how many first quarter 100 yard rushing performances Garrett's older brothers, Gage and Gavin, who are division one running backs now, have had in their career. It's impressive, Dave. So, I mean, what else is there to say? That the kid rehabs his ACL, has a scare midsummer, comes back, says people, you know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, just play defense, Garrett, just play defense. No, I want to play fullback. I want to be a captain on this team. I want to lead this team to another state championship. And, boy, putting on a show here in the first quarter, two first quarter touchdowns and over 100 yards. Tigers offense had some questions coming in. They're firing on all cylinders early on, Dave. I think I might already have, the way it's going, I might have the Chicatano Ace Harbor game-changing moment already, Casey, and it happened very early on. Wow. 
and I'll explain what I mean as we get to the fourth quarter. Kickoff by Carter is going to actually be returned. It's going to be returned by Braylon Hawkins. He got it at the one-yard line, and it would have been better for a touchback as Braden Andrews makes the stop inside the 20. Ball is going to be spotted at the 17-yard line where the Bulldogs will have it first and 10, trailing 14 to nothing with 5-11 left in this season opening first quarter. Boy, Dave, it's funny when you said that. It'll be returned, and then I turned and looked that there was maybe seven black jerseys just running straight at the ball. I'm not sure if the Bulldog kick return unit got a block on anybody. Good luck to Braden Hawkins trying to return that one. Berwick setting up here for their second drive, Dave. Three and out on their first. You got to you gotta get a first down or two, get the ball moving. We say it all the time. You can't just keep giving the ball back to the Tiger offense. Lear in shotgun with Winter behind him. He's going to hand it off to Winter and nothing doing there. I don't know who you want to give credit to the tackle there for the Tigers, Casey. There was about six kids that got in on that stop. Coming off the bottom of the pile, two names you expect, Garrett Garcia and Dom Federoff. Dave. Two years ago, Garrett Garcia led the team 205 tackles. Last year, Dominic Federoff led the team 158 tackles. That's over 360 tackles returning. Now upperclassmen at the interior of that Tiger unit. Good luck anybody trying to block and run the ball up the middle on this Tiger unit. Now Lear is in shotgun with five receivers set. He's going to keep it, and Garcia is going to make the stop after a gain of about three yards, closing in also there appeared to be Jude Bremigen, who's in now as well at the other defensive tackle spot. Bremigen, the lone returning full-time starting offense alignment, Casey, rotating in with Landon Coke at D-tackle. Yeah, we also have Nathan Gallagher in there playing about a hybrid outside linebacker. I think more coverage-centric since they're Berwick, that is, is spreading them out. Coach Andy Mills, defensive coordinator for the Tigers, always making adjustments mid-game. Lear's going to roll out this time. It appears like it's a keep from the start, and he's going to get forward. A nice job there by Lear as Krebs and Carter were there to try and make the stop, but not before he picked up the first down, picking up five yards, and that's the first first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, heck of a job there by Lear. He knew the line to gain, put his head down, and got it. Krebs and Carter were heavy in pursuit for the Tigers, but a nice job by the first year starter for Berwick, Ethan Lear picking up that first down. Now Lear has the same formation, three receivers out wide. He's got fullback Rocco Romeo lead blocking for the running back in winter. Nothing doing there as he's going to be tackled for a loss. And right in there again, Casey, guess who? Oh, you wanted me to actually guess Garrett Garcia. Yep. Yeah, shocker. You could close your eyes probably and get that one right. Uh, it's it's just going to be extremely difficult for this Berwick team or the vast majority of teams to be able to run tackle to tackle outside the tackles with the team speed and pursuit that this Tiger defensive unit has. So same formation, handoff, same type of play Winter on the carry, and he's going to be tackled after a gain of maybe one by Ethan Mikowski. And before I go to you, Casey, I'm going to say this another time. I understand people aren't all listening at the same time. I just checked my phone. I have 24 text messages again all about the camera of the YouTube. There's nothing they can do about it right now, Dave, folks. They're working on it. Send them to Chris P.K. Medin. He is technical support here at the Southern Columbia Area School District. We are only broadcasters. If there was an issue with the Fox NFL Sunday broadcast, you wouldn't call Joe Buck. That is true. We're in here calling the game. <laughs> so, third down, pass is incomplete. Ooh. I don't know, Casey. I think they're going to call a pass interference. The pass on third and nine was intended for winter. Looked to me like he just ran into Gavin Krebs. He did. It was a, it was a goofy-looking play, Dave. It's tough to tell from our vantage point. Couldn't really see what happened. Certainly a lot of contact on the play. 100% uh, what they're going to be calling here. Don't forget, Dave, if the fans can't currently see the game on YouTube, they could always log on to the Black Diamond Sports Network, catch the audio there, Bill 95.3, if you're driving down the car on the radio. Lots of options to catch these Tigers on their hunt for a 14th state championship. 
We got a score update. Lewisburg leads Shimokan area three to nothing, so the Green Dragons kicked a field goal. First and 10 from the 45. Lear's gonna keep it. He's gonna get to about the 47 as Dom Fedorov, Ethan Mikowski, and Garrett Garcia were there to make the stop. Ball's at the 48. Tigers leading 14 to nothing with under two minutes now left in the first quarter. Yeah, Fedorov in there to stick his nose in. I noticed, Dave, as I was putting in some of the stats and updated heights and weights for the players getting our uh, sheets ready today, Fedorov put off quite a bit of weight this year up to on our book, 6'1", 220. I had him at about 200 last year. Uh, 220 pounds, stick it in, filling the nose. The two-time returning All-State selection, Dominic Fedorov. Lear in shotgun. He's going to hand the ball off to Winter. And just as you said it, Fedorov there again. He makes the stop, a three-yard loss. It's going to bring up a third down and 11. Tackle for loss there for Fedorov. Got Braden Andrews checking into the game, as you said, Dave. Corner, this... Tiger unit, a little bit of depth here on the defensive side. They're able to change some formations based upon what their opponents are doing more often than maybe in some years past. They'll go to more of a nickel look here. Two safeties, uh, Andrews and Murphy back there. I shouldn't have gave an exact number of 24 techs because now I have somebody say 25, 26, and 27 to be funny. As Lear's back to pass, he looks, he fires, and it's going to be caught and fumbled and recovered by Braden Andrews. Wow. That was an interesting play there, Casey. On the catch was number 20, Tymere Wilkerson. Heck of a catch. Was but a he heck was of a catch. Stripped and the sophomore Braden Andrews recovered the fumble after a gain of 19 yards. Yeah, thrown into double coverage there on third down. Wilkerson does a great job making the contested catch, but Andrews maybe even a better job staying on the play, he gets his hand in there and rips it out after possession was gained by Wilkerson, forcing a turnover, Tiger football. Still 31 seconds to go here in the first quarter. First and 10 Southern from the 36, and they're gonna get a false start here. Yeah, that was interesting. Heads up play by Andrews, a heck of a catch. Nice throw from Lear into double coverage as Wilkerson had the first down, but Andrews is there. I didn't catch who the other Tiger was. Loudon Murphy. Okay, Loudon Murphy. So one of those two um, caused the fumble. So a turnover there. Five yard penalty against the Tigers. About the only thing holding them is the three penalties. And it's going to be Wise back to pass. He's going to look. He's going to throw it. And incomplete intended for Kyle Chrisman. Nice coverage there by Josh Kishbaugh as we see the work crew coming up to try and fix the huddle camera. So stay tuned to that. Not every game you see an orange ladder coming <laughs> up here, right, to go to the top of the press box, Dave. Tigers tried to hit the backside post to the speedster, Kyle Chrisman there. Good protection on the play. Honestly, a good throw, just better coverage from the Berwick defense running the route for him. Good job by that Berwick defense preventing a big opening play for the Tigers. So it's second down and 15. Double reverse goes to Carter Madden. He's across the 35, tripped up there. A helmet came off one of the Berwick players. It's going to bring up a third down and 10 for the Tigers. And Southern Columbia is not going to need to run another play. That's going to do it for the first quarter. An impressive one for Southern Columbia. At the end of one, Southern Columbia 14, Berwick nothing. Tigers will have it third and 10 to start the second quarter. You're listening to Cole Region High School Football on the Black Diamond Sports Network. We'll be back in one minute. Little Village Primitives, Route 54 in Elysburg, specializes in American-made and handcrafted goods. The shop has a delightful scent of pumpkin pie and spices. Everywhere you look, there is a touch of spices, touch of autumn. Their tea selection is honey right in the bag. Crafters will be amazed at the selection of wool, supplies, and patterns. Looking for an American-made upholstered furniture? Browse the town and country furnishing catalog for quality furniture made in Ohio. Little Village Primitives open Thursday and Friday, 10 to 5, or shop online 24-7 at lvprims.com. 
do suffer from neck, back, or shoulder pain? Do you experience pain, numbness, or tingling in your arms or legs? Is your lifestyle hampered by headaches? If so, you could be like tens of thousands of other people who have found relief from these and other ailments through chiropractic care. Give Dr. Philip Manny of the Manny Chiropractic Clinic, 44 North Market Street in Shemokin, a call at 570-644-2225 to schedule your appointment. Most insurance is accepted, including auto and workers' compensation. That phone number again is 570-644-BACK. So we're back here on Jim Roth Field. Tigers leading 14 to nothing. Third and 10 from their own 36 to start the second quarter. Wise, back to pass. He looks, he throws, it's gonna be caught. Nice pass by Jake Hoy as he's gonna get into Bulldog territory. There Tackled there by Jimmy DeAndrea, but a nice play there, Casey. Yeah, you wanna get the passing game going. That's a good, easy one you like to see. A little 10 yard hitch route at the sticks. Hoy does a nice job breaking it off, getting plenty of separation. Wise steps up and delivers the ball on target, moving the chains. That's textbook there from the Tigers passing unit. We'll give him 23 yards on that completion. The first of Wise's senior year. And he's back to pass again. He's gonna be hit as he throws it. Nothing he could have done there as it was a heavy pressure by Jimmy DeAndrea. And the closest man there was defensive back Braylon Hawkins for the Bulldogs. Yeah, nice job timing up that inside linebacker blitz there from the Bulldogs and DeAndrea. And, you know, that's a challenge for a young, inexperienced offensive line. One thing to be blocking stationary guys in practice or in camps all year, but when you're getting stunts and timed blitzes in real live action, that's tough to pick up. Good blitz there by DeAndrea and nearly forced a turnover from the Tigers. Second and ten Tigers from the Bulldog, 41 early in this second quarter. Handoffs to Garcia. He's going to try and get to the outside. Gets through the initial surge before being tripped up by Kishba. Garcia gets to the 36-yard line, so give him six on the play. Third down and four coming up. And we got a score update, Casey, after the first quarter. Mount Carmel area and North Schuylkill tied at six. Wow. And there you see the chest mask, Dave. Looked like Berwick went right back to that same blitz, DeAndrea over the A-gap trying to blow it up. So what does Coach Roth do? He runs a little weak side power with Garcia. Try to slip past that blitz, pick up a nice gain on the play. Toss goes to Carter Madden, and he's going to pick up a first down inside the 30 to the 28. A beautiful move there. He would have been hit behind the line of scrimmage, but does his best impression of a Barry Sanders shuffle there. And it's a first down for Southern Columbia. Give, we'll see where they spot it. Give Carter Madden nine yards on that carry. These three Tiger backs and Madden, Garcia, and Carter all have a little bit of a different rushing style. It's nice to see, and it brings a different element that defenses have to defend against there. Madden with the nice juke move. First and 10 Tigers from the 27. Wise back to throw. He looks. Nice pass to Loudon Murphy, who's inside the 10, inside the five, breaks two tackles, and it's going to be a 27-yard touchdown connection. Nice throw, nice catch, and a great job by Murphy after the catch. Wow, Dave, what a great play. Bringing me back to 2011 when Brad the Diesel Fegley used to hit that little wheel and go route to the halfbacks. Excellent ball there over the shoulder with some touch from Blake Wise. He hits Murphy, runs a perfect route, makes a man miss and scores. And we'll see if Isaac Carter can make it three for three. And as you expect, he does. So with 9.24 left in the first half, all Southern in this one, they lead 21 to nothing. We'll be back with Bill 95.3 in 30 seconds. Miller, gas and oil, wants to remind you that old man winter is knocking at the door. Now is the perfect time to fill up for winter. For your home or business, you want high-quality fuel at a competitive price from a supplier you can trust. Count on Miller Gas and Oil to deliver. From heating oil to diesel, commercial lubricants, and hydraulic fluids, Miller's has got you covered. They offer 24-hour service for all oil customers. 
Call 570-644-0318 or visit MillerGasAndOil.com. Miller Gas and Oil, family owned and operated since 1928. Well, Casey, a completely different scene compared to last year's opener at Crispin Field. Berwick led 14 to nothing. Berwick led 14 to nothing over the Tigers last year at halftime, and this year it's even more dominant in the opposite direction as Southern Columbia is up three touchdowns to nothing, three possessions, three touchdowns, and the Tigers have worked it a variety of ways as Carter kicks it deep, and this time it could have been returned right about at the same one-yard line by Hawkins, but he did the smart thing there. Great kick with great air time, and it's going to be a touchback the second one this season for Isaac Carter. Early reports are in, Dave, and it's more of the same for the Southern Columbia Tigers. Jim Roth and his staff, Andy Mills and this defense, they've come out week one and executed truthfully in all three facets of the game early on with some new guys working in and some big shoes to fill. I'm not sure how much more you could have asked for in the opening quarter, quarter and a half from this 2023 Tiger unit. And this is a Berwick team that had lofty expectations compared to last season, which was a second round playoff exit. They did lose a lot of key players, but have a decent amount returning. So it just shows you how strong the Tigers are starting as Lear's in shotgun. Long snap, he's gonna hand the ball off and nothing doing maybe two yards on the play. First carry of the game by DeAndrea. He was actually, in his case, to give him credit, he was hit about three yards behind the line of scrimmage, and he ended up picking up two on the play. He's running hard, and maybe that even exemplifies the strength of this Tiger unit. I think that was Loudon Murphy on the tackle, right, Dave? Yep. And look at I see the new see the new uh, down markers. I like that. Digital. We can Fluorescent. see them. Fluorescent. I yep. can see that better than I can see anything on the field. I Dave. don't know if they're flipping them, or is that all digital? We'll have to see the next... I'll watch here on this play. You watch. Okay, as Lear now has DeAndrea to his left, three receivers back. Lear rolls out. He looks. He's hit by Isaac Carter, and it's going to be intercepted, it appears. Wow. Who came up with it? I don't know who intercepted it. These New Jerseys, that David's. Jack Beermoss? I think that's number 20. We might have to go to... Video statistician Dewey Townsend. Yes, for it is. Jake Beer, or Jack Beermoss, I'm sorry. Interception there. As Isaac Carter makes the hit. And Tigers have it in great field position again after that Beermoss interception. Dave, Isaac Carter is a problem, my friend. That man is in the backfield again. Another hurry, another quarterback hit. Quarterback hits the deck, forces the interception. Whew. So first and 10 Tigers as Wise is back to throw. It's a screen pass. Nice grab by Garrett Garcia, one-handed. He's going to pick up a first down as he breaks one tackle, takes it to the 20-yard line, a 15-yard pickup, and they're actually going to mark it at the 21-yard line. Boy, they had that one set up nice. Let the floodgates open and throw it over the top. Nice call there from Jim Roth. Calling the plays for the Tigers. Nice execution. Good job by Wise to let that rush come in, let the blockers get time to get downfield and pick up some blocks for the receiver. So, Southern's using plenty of wrinkles out of this wing T formation that's evolved over to Roth's four decade career. Handoff goes to Carter Madden. He's inside the 15, and he gets down to about the 10. DeAndrea makes the stop near first down territory. I don't know if he got quite that, Casey, but he was pretty darn close. And it's a great point you brought up, Dave, about how it's changed throughout the years, that being Coach Routh's offensive system. I think people on the outside might think, oh, they just run the wing tee. And to a certain extent, they're right. But different players, you run different packages, different sorts of plays. And I mean, the evidence is right here on the field. Early on, just a little bit of a different look than these offenses have had in the past five, six years. Second and one from the 11, handoff goes to Garcia. He's gonna be stopped at the five yard line, first and goal for the Tigers. And we're in the red zone, potential scoring drive, driven by Blaze Alexander, Chrysler Dodge, 
Jeep Ram Fiat of Lewisburg, helping you score big on savings. Ninth first down for the Tigers, Casey, compared to two for the Bulldogs, and one of those came via a questionable pass interference call. First and goal, Tigers from the five-yard line. Handoff goes to Carter Madden. He's going to try and get inside the three to about the two-yard line where he's tackled by a couple of Bulldogs. Yeah, nice job by this Bulldog goal line defense standing tall. They haven't necessarily made it easy once the Tigers have got that in here into the red zone, making them work for everything. Carter last year was kind of the Tigers' go-to like touchdown specialist. He had 13 touchdowns on the year, and as I said earlier, they would balance the formation a lot. He was really good at scoring. Nice job by Berwick there to keep him just short. Second and goal from the two. Handoff goes again to Madden. And he's going to get into the end zone. Southern Columbia extends their lead. Two-yard touchdown run by Carter Madden with 6.09 left in the first half. Just pure dominance every way you look at it, Casey, by the Tigers. And what do you do if you're the defense there, Dave? You're looking at Garcia, who's well over 100 yards here in the first half. He's got two TDs. Do you just try to stop up the middle? Do you go left? Do you go right? That balanced goal line attack that the Tigers have implemented for decades, so tough to stop around the end zone, paying off once again. Madden for six. And now it's Carter with the bobbled snap. Loudon Murphy's going to take off and try to get to the pylon, and folks, he does easily. <laughs> so Loudon Murphy couldn't get the snap down, but he goes in for two. 6.09 left in this first half. Southern Columbia is dominating every facet of this game at Tiger Stadium. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Let's get ready to rumble with the best sports coverage in the Valley. Pick up a copy of the News Item Weekender for the most comprehensive high school football coverage. No one can beat the News Item in local news and sports coverage. Pick up a copy at the newsstand, or better yet, subscribe and have it delivered right to your front door. Online e-editions are also available. Do not delay and subscribe today. Visit www.newsitem.com for details. The News Item, your local hometown newspaper so it's hard to think the Tigers in the first 24 minutes last year against the Bulldogs scored zero points in the first 18 minutes this year they already have 29 on the board and we're gonna do it again Isaac Carter set to kick it off and he's gonna have a lower kick as Winter gets it at about his seven yard line. It was a squib type kick. He's across the 20, breaks to the outside across the 30, and he's gonna be tackled by the kicker, Isaac Carter. A nice return though by Winter at about the 42. Heck of a return by Winter. Bounced off the would be tackler of the Tigers, gets to the boundary and picks up a really nice gain near midfield. It is nice, Dave, when your kicker is one of the best defensive <laughs> players in the state. So it's not like, you know, one of those NFL things where you're like, oh, he's just got the kicker to beat. And it's, you know, some scrawny guy out there. You're like, oh, he never has a chance. <laughs> no, nah, you, you got Isaac Carter, one of the strongest guys on the team, one of the best defensive players in the state. He, he wraps him up solid at the boundary. Not a bad problem to have indeed if that's your final line of defense, a defensive tackle that we both thought, even though playing in just six games, last year on defense should have been named an All-Stater. So we have a quick break here for a water drink and we're gonna take one as well. We'll be back in 30 seconds. PBS Beverage and Pack Sinus and owner Steve Tehansky are proud supporters of Southern Columbia football. His great prices make it an easy decision to stop in and pick up or pick out from a variety of your favorite selections with an easy to get to location on Route 61 between Elysburg and Schmokin. There isn't any other choice than PBS. Check out their Facebook page for deals and hours of operations throughout the week. Call the store at 570-648-8080 for any additional details. Steve Tehansky, alum and supporter of Tiger, Tiger Football. If you're not already a customer, become one. Handoff goes to DeAndrea. He's going to get to the outside. Breaks a tackle. He's across the 50, the 40, 30, 20. Stays in bounds, and he's going to go all the way for a 40 Eight-yard touchdown, however, I think there's a hold or a block in the back on this one, Casey. Oh, that's a backbreaker for the Bulldogs fans. They thought they finally busted a big one, but from my angle here, it definitely looked like the outside receiver came back with an illegal block in the back or hold. Uh, 
Walking it back, Dave, would be big play negated by the penalty. Now, the one rule change in high school football this year, a holding call is from the line of scrimmage, wherever it was, 10 yards from there. Here, in the case of a block in the back, that's 10 yards from the spot. It's a great so, note, Dave, great note. It's back who, first year starter, however, he had experience last season, and you want a senior with that kind of leadership, brings up second and 10 from the Tiger 49 with just over five minutes to go in the first half. Kind of a pistol formation here as Lear throws it. It's gonna be caught, but nothing doing as Landon Cokes there to make the stop on the catch was Wilkerson, but he's gonna lose about four on the play. Hey, you have a good thing going there, Dave. You get the big play negated by the holding call off the read option where the running back takes it. Then you hit it back, flip sides, and the quarterback keeps it on the option, picks up one of the nicest runs of the game for eight yards. You're looking at second and two. And it looks like Wilkerson Casey is hurt. So with that, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to Black Diamond Sports Network and Bill 95.3. Penn's Tavern, a historical waterfront restaurant located along the beautiful Susquehanna River on Route 147 just south of Sunbury. In Fisher's Ferry promises a memorable dining experience. For reservations, phone 570-286-2007. Penn's Tavern, a historic waterfront restaurant. 113 River Road, Route 147, Fisher's Ferry, south of Sunbury. Looking to purchase some new tiger wear? Stop in at Pretty Petals and Pack Sinus and shop their extensive line of youth and adult SEA apparel. They carry sizes ranging from newborn to 4XL. Pretty Petals also carries multiple designs and styles, so stop in and purchase yours now. Pretty Petals is more than just a flower shop. Remember, as always, shop local, shop small, shop Pretty Petals, Route 487, Pack Sinus, and go Tigers. So we're back here with 4.48 left in the first half. Tigers leading 29 to nothing. It's nice to see Wilkerson able to walk off on his own. Not sure where he got injured, so we're not going to speculate. But it was Landon Coke that made the stop, and there was three or four other Tigers right around him. Excellent pursuit by the Tigers' defense. Takes the ball back to Berwick side of the field, and it'll be a third, and we'll call it a long four from the Bulldog 48-yard line. And just to finish that last point, Dave, you get to second and two and you, you know, instead of going right back to what got you there, the read option, you try to run a quick little stop route in the flat, not even all the way out to the boundary. It allows way too much of that team speed and pursuit of the Tigers. Not my, not my most favorite play call there on second and two. Let's put it that way. So the clock continues at 430, and it's okay. a fumble on the play. It's going to be recovered by Lear but a loss of, we'll call it eight, so it's gonna be another punting situation. And there you go, a drive killer. You get a little something going. Started at the top, Dave, there, and just progressively each play got systemically worse. You start with the touchdown, call back on the hold, then you get a nice gainer, stop for a loss, and then an unfortunate miscommunication on the Snap exchange between center and quarterback. Berwick's going to have to punt this one away, trailing by 29. So Peters gets off the punt. Murphy deep. Not going to return this one as it gets a nice roll inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line where the Tigers will have it first and 10. So Southern Columbia could score a touchdown here, Casey, to put this game into the mercy rule come the second half. And the way their offense has looked and the way the defense has played, one could only expect that to happen. Yeah, and let's see what they come out with here, Dave. It's been nearly flawless for the Tigers, whether that be blocking up front or their backs and skill position players. They've done a really nice job. See if they could get one more drive out of them here tonight and put this thing into the mercy rule. Okay, so first and 10 Tigers from the 23. Wise back to pass. He looks, he fires. It's going to be caught by Madden for a gain of about two yards, and he gets up gingerly. That's something you don't like to see, but he's a tough kid. Tell you what, an old-fashioned 
defensive battle, Lewisburg goes up on Shemokin six to nothing. So that's two field goals for the Green Dragons. Wow. Tigers electing to take their time, 3.23 and counting as they break the huddle, not going to a no huddle approach yet. Handoff goes to Garcia. He's going to fumble the football. It looks like it's going to be recovered by the Bulldogs. We'll see. It is. So after a gain of three, he coughs it up. And now it'll be Berwick with great field position. And there was a mistake. Nearly flawless so far. Garcia gets it popped out near the middle of the field. Nice job by that Berwick unit. Near desperation mode there, down four scores and heading towards the conclusion of the first half, forcing a turnover and getting the ball back in a scoring range. So this is certainly their best opportunity just outside the Blaze Alexander red zone. So it sounds like they're hoping to get the uh, huddle camera working for the second half, last report. So it'll be first and 10 Berwick from the 28 yard line. As coming up at halftime, Al Monelli, the documentary Roar, he's gonna be on to talk about how fun it was to cover that. Lear's back to pass and Isaac Carter and it's gonna be a recovered fumble and it's gonna be taken back by Loudon Murphy. 67 yards for a Tiger touchdown. I thought it was a forward pass myself. It looked like it was a forward pass. Either way, Isaac Carter making a feast of this 